both with the tabernacle and then with the temple. It was the one day a year that the high priest could offer uh, a sacrifice on behalf of all of Israel. And the one high priest, only one person, was allowed uh, to go into the Holy of Holies. And it was this curtained off area inside the tabernacle and then and later the temple that was said to contain the presence of God. And there was the Ark of the Covenant in there, the mercy seat. And as you look at, especially in Exodus, the imagery of the tabernacle and of the temple, uh, you see it's all of this imagery of entering back into Eden, the Garden of Eden, where man dwelt perfectly in relationship in the presence of God. And it's wanting to get back into the presence of God. But he could only do it once a year. And in order to do that, he had to do all of these rituals, all of these things. Even before the sacrifices, he had to uh, put on these holy garments and things like that. He had to make sure he had the right kind of sacrifices uh, in order to make. And, um, but before all of that, before he could make the sacrifices, before he could put on the, the holy garments, he had to wash himself by dipping himself in water. And there's even kind of a special, uh, it almost looks like what we would think would be a baptismal font, but a little pool with steps going into it uh, that, were, that were built, that were used by the high priests for various cleansing rituals. They would go down, they would dunk themselves in the water. And so New Testament baptism builds on this imagery that before you enter into the presence of God, you must be cleansed. Before you enter into the Holy of Holies, into an intimate relationship of God, there is a cleansing that needs to happen. But that was before uh, the, the priest could offer the sacrifices. In other words, it's the sacrifices that let him into the Holy of Holies, right? It's the blood of the sacrifice. But even before he can handle the blood of the sacrifice, he, he has to clean himself up. He has to clean up his own life before he can come and handle the blood of the sacrifice. But in the New Testament, it's flipped, right? You, you can't clean yourself up before you come to Jesus. You can't do it on your own. You can't cleanse your own life. And so we learn in 1 John 1.7 that it is the blood itself of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin. The blood is what cleanses. This water here today... It doesn't just symbolize the, the waters of judgment. It's not even just waters of cleansing as though it were washing us. It symbolizes the blood of Jesus itself. That it is the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from sin. You can't clean yourself up enough on your own to then be able to handle the blood of the sacrifice. The priest had to do that, right? But you can't do it on your own. So what does Jesus do? You are cleansed in the blood, when you come out, you are cleansed and you're already handling the blood of the sacrifice. And therefore, you can enter into the Holy of Holies. You can enter into God's presence. You can enter into an intimate relationship with him because you are cleansed, you are washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. We see this in Jesus' baptism in Matthew 3, uh, verses 16 and 17. I don't know if, can we put that on? Yes. Uh, and when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. He's cleansed in the waters of baptism. Then what happens? The entrance to the Holy of Holies. The curtain parts. The heavens open. And he, he is able to enter freely into God's intimate presence. He is able to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit rests upon him. And he's able to hear the Father's voice saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. In so many ways, the symbolism of Jesus' baptism, the reception that he receives, it prefigures everyone else who follows after him. Right? Right? The one who is baptized here today, in the same way, in the Spirit, we may not see a visible sign, but in the Spirit, the heavens are open to them. They have now new free access to God's intimate presence. The Holy Spirit comes upon them and dwells in them in a new way. And we are able to hear and declare over them what the Father says, that you are my beloved son, you are my beloved daughter, with whom I am well pleased. 
That is the testimony that we get to see today. And that is true of you. If you have been baptized, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, that is true of you today. And my prayer for you all is as we see uh, these baptisms, as we hear their testimonies today, that you would be inspired to greater faith, to believing that you have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus, that you are able to enter in to the Holy of Holies, that you are able to have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you in a greater measure, that you're able to hear the voice of the Father saying, you're my beloved son, my beloved daughter, and I'm well pleased with you. Maybe you're here today and you're feeling a lack of connection with the Father. And maybe you've already been baptized. Maybe you've been a believer for years. But we can all go through those stages where we don't feel as close, where we don't have that intimacy, where we don't feel the power of the Spirit, where we don't have the testimonies that maybe we used to have when we were a a younger believer and we're feeling a little bit stale in our faith and maybe a bit disconnected. I want to encourage you today as you hear these testimonies, let them inspire you. Let them cause faith to stir up in you to believe that I am a child of God. I do have access to the Holy of Holies. I do have access to his intimacy and his presence. I can enter in anytime I want to. I can receive his Holy Spirit in greater measure anytime I want to. Why? Because I am cleansed by the blood of Jesus. His sacrifice was good enough for me. His sacrifice, his atoning death on the cross, he died in our place suffering under the weight of our sins so that we might live in resurrection life and in newness of life with him. So as we hear these testimonies today, I want to encourage you, pay attention. Listen to what they're saying. As long or as short as they may be, they're testifying to a new reality, something that has happened in them, a faith that has risen up in them, and they're walking in newness of life. That's for everyone here today. Amen? Amen. Well, with that, I want to welcome up Uh, some of our baptism candidates. Pastor Jerome, go ahead and test the water for us uh, this morning. We'll uh, We'll see what the verdict is. You may need to lie about it. That's okay. You can lie about it just to encourage them. I'm, I'm sanctifying that lie if you need to. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, uh, and let's welcome, oh, let's get you a microphone. Maybe before you splash too much. If I drop it. There you go. I'll well, just do that. And I want to welcome up our first baptism candidate, Ann Wacabella. Would you come forward, please? Come on up. You can just join me here down at the stage. So this is Anne, and she's come to be baptized today. So Anne, why don't you tell us why you would like to be baptized today? Um, I'd like to be baptized today because um, I wanted a new experience, and um, I wanted to experience God through baptism. Um, yeah, that's why I wanted to get outside. And what was the, the testimony that you shared with me? What has God been doing in your life? Um, well, I, I've been going through a lot in the past three years. Um, prior to that, um, I always had a relationship with God. But um, I decided to, to come back to God because I kind of slipped off from God. Um, when my dad died, a lot changed in my life because um, I never experienced death in my life, in my family, like close to me. But when my dad died, um, a lot changed, and that made me go into depression. And, um, and then after that, um, the only thing that could help me was getting closer to God. Um, I chose to be baptized in this church because I've been going here since I was 13 um, at the other location until I came to this location. I grew up in this church. I, I know some faces. Some faces are new. Um, so I wanted to testify that I love God, and I wanted to prove it to the world that I'm ready to be baptized and, and get closer to him through this baptism. Amen. Amen. Well, you've heard it from her lips. She has experienced Jesus Christ, comforting her, encouraging her with her now, and she desires more of him. We want to invite any family, any friends that might be here to come and surround her and just to pray. 
And I think we've got mom over here. And if there's anyone else that, that is close and would like to come up and join us in prayer, we're just going to have a moment of prayer this morning. Let's pray. And let's just stretch our hands as we pray. Father, we thank you for Anne. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing in her life, oh God. Father, we bless her, Lord, as she enters into the waters of baptism today. Lord, it's a step of obedience to you because she desires to be closer to you. And that's the way to get closer to you, to, to obey you, to follow the path of faith, to walk in your ways, oh God. And Lord, I thank you that she's committing to do that today. Lord, I thank you for the ways that you have been with her, Lord, that you have helped her, Lord, that you have strengthened her, Lord, even in the midst of, of depression, of, of grieving the death of her father, oh God, of the many struggles she's been through in life, that you, you have brought her to this point. Lord, that we may walk away, but Lord, if you called us, if you have brought us to yourself, that you will save us. And so, Father, we thank you for that testimony of Anne's today. Lord, I pray that as she goes into the waters of baptism, as she comes up, Lord, that she would come up into newness of life, into resurrection power, into the infilling and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, O oh God. Father, that fruitfulness, Lord, that the fruit of the Spirit, that the gifts of the Spirit, O oh God, would be evident in her life, O oh God. And, Father, that she would follow you, Lord, to your glory's sake all the days of her life, oh God. So Father, I bless her today, and Lord, I pray, Lord, that anyone who has heard her testimony today, Lord, who might be walking through something similar today, Father, would see her faith and be inspired to make the same decision. Lord, we bless Anne, oh God, and Lord, may her testimonies continually increase as she walks with you all the days of her life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen, amen. That's right. Well, Anne, you can go ahead, and Pastor Jerome will receive you. Just know that God's with you and uh, his coverings over our life and it's just am am amazing to see someone that can go through such a tough time a tough situation but know that there's light at the end of the tunnel so and I already know the answer but do you love Jesus today yeah. and are you committed to following him for the rest of your life Well, it's with great honor and pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. This is amazing. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. Let's continue on with Matthew. Matthew Clark, come on down. This is Matthew, everybody, and Matthew's got a testimony to share with you today. So Matthew, why don't you tell us why you'd like to be baptized today? My faith is encouraged by my Aunt Ella, my grandmother, and my grandfather, and my Aunt Anne. My mom, my favorite Bible verse is from First John, verse second. I am writing this to you, who was, who are God. I, children, because you are 
Your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. I am writing this to you, young man, because you are strong and the word of God lives in you and you and you have overcome the evil one. Jesus has set me free from sin and I am ready to follow him as the Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, I'd like to invite up Matthew's family who's here today. So family, come on up and we're going to join together and pray for Matthew. He's got his mom, I believe his grandmother and aunt here today. And Oh, I think dad's in the back filming. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Welcome. Let's just gather around and we can lay a hand on Matthew and pray for him today. Let's stretch our hands forward. Father, we thank you for Matthew. We thank you for his testimony. We thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord, that you have overcome the evil one. And we thank you that you, you have written this letter to him, Lord, to strengthen him in his faith. Lord, I thank you for the testimony, Lord, of the faith of his family that has encouraged him, O oh God, that he has looked to those who are uh, have gone before him as we ought to do and in, been inspired by their faith, Lord, to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, O oh God. Father, I thank you that he has committed himself to walk in your ways, Lord, that he has uh, repented of sin, that he has said he wants to live a new life in Jesus Christ as, as Lord and Savior of his life. Father, I just pray, Lord, that same prayer, Father, that as he comes up out of the waters of baptism, that he would enter into new life, into resurrection power, into the fullness of the Holy Spirit, O oh God. Lord, would you be so active in his life, stirring a passion in him, power in him, O oh God, and the fruit of the Spirit in him. Father, that his testimony would multiply and continue to grow, O oh God, and continue to inspire, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for the things that you have already done in his life, O oh God, and I thank you for the increase that that you're bringing him, oh God, that as he partners his faith with your word, that he's going to see miracles happen in his life. Father, bless him today that as he is baptized, he would continue to grow in the faith that you have planted in him. In Jesus' mighty name, everyone said, amen. Amen. All right, Matthew, we'll go ahead and, oh yes, give family a hug. Absolutely. <laughs> Matthew is one of our young adults here at Peace Tower, and um, what I love about Matthew, not only did we get to walk personally together for a long time, for over a year now, um, but the way Matthew came to Peace Tower, I think he saw someone posted, one of our young adults posted that there was young adults happening. Matthew saw and just showed up. That's it. No one said, hey, Matthew, do you want to come? Matthew just said, hey, what's this? And he showed up. And it just shows that Matthew's the type of person I can see that literally if God's calling him to anything, he's going to show up. Matthew will show up and God will show up for Matthew. I fully believe that, man. And I'm so, I'm so, I'm so proud. I'm so proud of this guy. Matthew, do you love Jesus today? I do. Are you committed to following him for the rest of your life? Well, it was with great honor and great privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name.
for baptism this morning. Uh, so Suzanne and daughter Annie, would you guys come on up? Let's welcome them up. So this is Suzanne and this is her, her daughter Annie and her daughter Annie is going to translate for her today because Suzanne only speaks French. And so I, I love that about this house too. We have so many nations, so many languages. Uh, we have French translation in the back if you need it. And, um, and so we get to hear a testimony in French today. And so uh, just going to ask Suzanne, why do you want to be baptized today? Je, veux, je voudrais me faire baptiser aujourd'hui parce que à l'ancien temps au village le pasteur n'a pas voulu nous baptiser nous étions encore petits et j'avais eu mal au cœur je suis restée ok, euh, maman dit que when, I'm sorry <laughs> yeah when she was young um, she wanted to be baptized but uh, Pasteur refuse and she was hurt. Après, je suis restée, mais je connais bien la voix de Jésus. Je vais à l'église souvent. Okay. Uh, after that, she was going to church. She knew the the, the way of the, the way of Jesus, but. Yeah. Bon, maintenant même si on connaît pas l'anglais, mais la voix de Jésus m'a appelé. La nuit, et j'ai dit à ma fille, oui, je veux me faire baptiser. Ok, she said that, even though she don't know, uh, she does not know English, but she heard the, the word of God, and she want to be baptized. Et je suis venu à mon, au nom de Jésus, me faire baptiser. And she's there, in the name of Jesus, to be baptized. And what, what did you tell me uh, when we talked on the phone? Um, it's just, uh, you know, my mom was born in, um, in the Catholic um, family. And um, at that time, she was going to church with friends in the neighborhood. And it was an evangelic church. And then one um, man of God, she was, he was a uh, pro prophet, came and prophesied upon her, saying that she had a call of God. And then she decided to be baptized, to follow Jesus. And the pastor refused. And when the pastor refused, she was going to church. After a few times, uh, my dad came and wanted to marry her. And she, she got married to my dad, who was from uh, the evangelic church. And the city where my, my the neighborhood where my dad was born is a mission for people from Sweden. And she had more uh, grace to know about Jesus, to have more grace to learn about God. And then they moved up north to work where my dad was a teacher. And then um, the, the church was far away from where they were living. The Sweden people wanted to come because of them to build the church, but um, people around there did not like and they stopped. And after a few times, they went back to the region where they were born, and uh, changed, uh, things changed. A few times few time after, she decided to go to another church. And after they moved, my, my, my dad was called to go to work somewhere else, and it stopped. And after time, afterwards, she decided to be baptized. And in that time, an event arrived, happened, and she stopped. And after that, she was discouraged, and she said, oh, even I did not get baptized, but goes no. Before I end up my life, I will be baptized. Amen. Amen. It's never too late. It's never too late. Right? So uh, we have family here. Is there any more family? Come on up. We're going to pray. Is this everyone? Come, oh, and friends too. Come on up. We're going to pray. Let's stretch our hands today. Father, we just bless Suzanne in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we fill her with your Holy Spirit today. 
Father, we thank you for her testimony, Lord, of, of, of perseverance, Father, Lord, of following in your way, and Lord, even through discouragement and disappointment, oh God, Father, that after all is said and done, that you made a way, Lord, that even, even later in life, Father, that she could be baptized, that she could proclaim, Lord, and have a testimony that she believes that Jesus Christ is Lord and that she is following after him. Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, that as she goes through the waters of baptism today, Lord, that she would enter in, Lord, to resurrection life, to resurrection power, O God. Father, that the Holy Spirit would empower her, Lord, to be a bold witness, Lord, of your goodness and your glory in her life, O God. Father, we just cover her with the blood of Jesus, Lord, that cleanses her from sin and protects her from evil, O God. Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, for the spirit baptism, Lord, to come upon her, Father, that she might, with the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit, continue to testify to your glory with all boldness, O oh God. Father, we're thankful for her family surrounding her, for the people that have witnessed, Lord, her journey of faith, O oh God. And Father, for the testimony, Lord, that can inspire others here today, that no matter what your age is, no matter what you've been through, no matter how long it has been, you can be baptized. You can begin again a new life in Jesus Christ. We thank you for Suzanne's testimony today. We bless her in Jesus' name. Everyone said, amen. Amen. All right. Well, Suzanne, you can head on over to Anne. to go out into all the world and baptize them. Peace Tower Church is a global community. Many nations, generations, different stories. And I know, like Pastor Mike said, there's no time, there's no, there's no time that can ever surpass God's time and over your life. You might think it's too late. You might think it's, it's never going to happen. God's timing is perfect. God's timing is always going to work out. And Suzanne, the word that came to me, it's a verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And as Pastor Mike said, this is not the end. This is the beginning of life. And I'm praying over you that God is going to open up your eyes to see new things. Suzanne, do you love the Lord today? Go help Go help Oui. And are you committed to following him for the rest of your life? It's with great honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Je suis heureux car Jésus m'a sauvé. Je suis heureux car Jésus m'a sauvé. Dans son amour, il m'a tout pardonné. Voilà pourquoi je me mets à chanter. Je suis heureux car Jésus m'a sauvé. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you today. Maybe you've seen these testimonies or heard these testimonies and seen these baptisms and you want to be baptized. Come talk to a pastor. We do baptisms periodically, but if there's great need, we'll, we'll do them as often as there is need. And so we want to hear from you. If this is something that you want, that you've never done before, please come and talk to us. This is an important step of obedience for those who have put their life, uh, put their faith in Jesus Christ and are following after him. I hope you're encouraged. I hope you're inspired. I hope that as you've heard their testimonies, that you can have greater faith to believe that as you have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ, that you get to enter in to the fullness of God's presence, 
of his Holy Spirit resting upon you, of hearing his voice say that you are my beloved son, my beloved daughter, in whom I'm well pleased. And if you're feeling disconnected today, maybe you're feeling distant from God, maybe you're feeling like you haven't heard, I used to experience the presence of God, but now I don't so much. And maybe you're feeling like I, I used to walk in the power of the Spirit and in the knowledge of the Spirit that was in me, but I, I just don't sense that anymore. If that's you today, I want to encourage you, there is more for you today. That God has not forgotten his promises. He has not forgotten or ceased to apply the sacrifice and the blood of Jesus to your life. That by faith, you can continue to enter in. You have, you've got the access card. You have the blood of Jesus that grants you the presence of God the fullness of an intimate relationship with him. I just want to invite the prayer team forward. And at, at this time, just in closing, we're going to close in worship, but I want to offer a space for you this morning where if you're feeling far off, if you're feeling disconnected, if you're wanting to enter back into the presence of God to receive more of the Holy Spirit, come to these altars this morning. Come and receive prayer. Come and worship. Come and kneel down. Come and repent again. God has not forgotten you. Jesus is still making a way for you each and every day because his mercies are new every morning. Amen? Why don't we stand to our feet? And we're going to sing this song, and I just encourage you, we're going to close with worship today. And we're going to close with a time of, of humbling ourselves before God and receiving by faith that nearness, that intimacy, that power. Maybe we once were walking in it, but maybe today we're, it's grown cold. Or maybe it's something we've never walked in before. I want to encourage you to come forward to these altars as the Spirit leads you. Let's just open in prayer. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this day. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the testimonies, Lord, of, of Anne, of Matthew, of Suzanne, Lord Jesus. Lord, that they have found faith in you, that they have found new life in you, O oh God. And we bless them into that new life. We bless them, O oh God, as they've gone through the waters of baptism, Lord, that they would experience, Lord, the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. Father, I pray for those here today, Lord, who've been baptized, who have, have walked in faith, O oh God, but Lord, are feeling distant, are feeling that they're, they're not hearing your voice, they're not entering into your presence, the, the heavens aren't open over their lives anymore, they're, they're feeling down, they're feeling discouraged. Father, I pray, Lord, that they would sense your presence in a new way, that you would open the heavens, that you would encourage them, that you would stir up faith in them, that you would reawaken their first love, Lord, to seek after you, O oh God, and to experience your goodness, Lord, your holiness, O oh God, that they can enter in to the holy of holies, not by their uh, by, not by their works, not by anything that they've done, not by cleaning themselves up enough, Lord, but by faith that they are cleansed in the blood of Jesus. Father, for those who maybe have never taken this step, they've never been baptized, maybe they're not even believers, they have not even professed faith in Jesus. Father, I pray that you would stir in their hearts, O God, today, Lord, to confess that, Jesus, you are Lord, that I want you, that I trust in you, that I want more of you, that I desire forgiveness of my sins, that I want to live in new life with you, that I want to know who God is and walk with him. And if that's you today, I just bless you that that would be your prayer today, that you would receive the faith of Jesus today, and that you would come forward to these altars. Father, would you bless the ministry around these altars, O oh God? Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill these ministers with your Holy Spirit, O oh God, as we minister today, and come and do a new work, a new thing, that we would all, as Peace Tower Church, die to the old and say yes to new life in Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. These altars are open. Let's continue in worship as we close today.